Welcome everyone to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. It is week 31, 2019. Hey, I'm glad that you're along with us. Thank you for making these Tuesdays so much fun. I have a couple of announcements and then we'll get right into your questions. Announcement number one, if you haven't yet checked out my June 2020 workshop with Bruce Dorn, there's only two spots left. It's next June down in Torrey, Utah, among all the Red Rocks. It's gonna be amazing. Swipe over to take a look at that. Announcement number two, Paisley is my good friends down there are also providing the uh, food for the June workshop, but they're also doing a Ask Me Anything Tuesday. So go ahead and take a look over at their page and ask them anything you'd like about the beef jerky product that they provide. So let's get right into your questions. Yes, really good question here. Um, I do augment natural light with artificial light when I'm out on location. Not all the time, but um, I, I would say 85% of the time I am doing that. I'll post a few pictures, let's take a look. Now in that image of Leanne and Hadley, that was augment, that sunset was augmented with artificial light coming from a 580 EX2 speed light matched with a 26 inch Westcott rapid box. Now what I'm doing with that picture of CC is I'm augmenting the natural light with artificial light using an Alien B AB800 with a rectangular softbox. Now in that picture of Jody, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using an Alien B AB400 and I put that on a softbox. We were out on location in the mountains, but I wasn't getting the background. So I moved the softbox behind her to get that wash out. Of course, the cheeky answer to this question is just go out and do it. And nothing will ever beat getting out there and, and actually doing it yourself. But there are a couple tips that I'll give you to understand it a little more. When we're shooting in manual, we take full control of our camera and we decide the exposure that's gonna be best for the given scene that we're in uh, and the circumstances that we find ourselves in as well. Uh, one of the ways to understand how manual works, so one of the ways to understand how manual works is by using the creative programs like AV or TV on Canons. AV would be considered what's called aperture priority. And this is where you choose the aperture and TV is shutter priority. And TV is considered shutter priority, where you choose the shutter speed, and then the camera in turn chooses the corresponding aperture and corresponding ISO to achieve uh, a balanced exposure, not a creative exposure. In using those two creative programs, AV and TV, what you can do is choose an aperture of say f2.8 or f4, point it at your subject, take the picture, and then see what the camera chose for the ISO and shutter speed. And the same thing applies in TV or shutter priority. You choose the shutter speed and then look and see what the settings were, what the aperture and what the ISO were that the camera chose. Then what you can do is take those settings, then what you can do is take those settings that the camera chose in either of those programs, flip your camera over to manual and plug those settings in. Now, it's gonna be the same exposure that the camera chose, but you have full control over what it looks like. My recommendation for your lens hood is use what came with your lens. The uh, manufacturer builds it specifically for those lenses. So for my 16 to 35, I use this uh, Canon 88D. And while there usually isn't a time that I don't use my lens hood, and, and while technically we're trying to prevent sun flare with it, the practical purpose for these guys is when I'm bending down, it prevents the lens from hitting the ground. Sounds kind of funny, but uh, I use it all the time. Given that I have a choice, I would say evening, and that's because I don't like to get up in the morning, but I do plenty of work in the morning as well. Um, the reality is you have to make a great image regardless of the situation you find yourself in. A couple things come to mind here. My first and, and most bias is towards uh, the aperture because I want the sharpest image possible. Um, I also use the aperture to reduce distractions as well by either blurring out the background the other thing that influences my decision here is um, the location that I find myself in. If I'm in an indoor arena, I know that I'm going to have to use a higher ISO and a, a much lower aperture, so something like f2.8. 
So something like an indoor arena is, I, I'm going to have to shoot at f2.8 with an ISO of maybe 13200, uh, maybe even 16000, something like that to achieve a balanced exposure there. Now on the flip side of this, if I'm out covering a branding or something like that, and I'm specifically covering roping, um, I may look to increase my shutter speed to freeze the rope in the air, to freeze the rope going over the calf's head or, or the heels or something like that. And then in another scenario, uh, while my bias would be towards the aperture, would be family photos. So let's say a family of five or six. I'm going to be at an aperture of probably f5.6 to f8 to make sure everybody is in acceptable focus in that area. Yes, I do. Primarily, I use my 5D Mark IV paired with the Canon 70 to 200 version, uh, version 2 f2.8 IS, and that's the image stabilizer. That's what I use for most of it. In addition to my Mark IV and my 70 to 200, I also have a Mark III with a 16 to 35, and occasionally. Um, I will use that camera and lens setup for portraits as well, and specifically action shots. That's my go-to. Here's the two lenses that I would recommend for every beginning photographer. Number one, the 50 millimeter f1.8. It's about $120. Uh, what this lens will do for you is it'll force you to move in and out with your feet. It will also... The other thing that this lens will do for you is it'll give you what I call spatial relationship awareness. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but uh, basically what that is is choosing the lens and determining how close or how far you need to be from your subject. The other lens that I would recommend is a 70 to 200. Now those come with a variety of options and a variety of different price points. You could get uh, the 70 to 200 f4 for about oh, $700. Uh, that's a great lens. What that 70 to 200 will do for you is it'll allow you to reach uh, obviously much farther than the 50 millimeter will and still be able to pick up a good picture. Mackenzie, thank you for submitting your question via direct message. Uh, this is a challenge that all of us will be faced with at one time or another when we're doing portraits. When we take somebody out to a park and the light is hitting the grass, what's happening is it's bouncing or reflecting back up into our subject's face and is bringing with it that green cast, which really isn't that flattering. Um, but that also applies no matter what the light hits. So the light could hit the white side of a horse trailer and, and actually provide a very beautiful fill light to our subject or the silver side of a horse trailer. Uh, or, <laughs> unfortunately, someone could be standing there with a red t-shirt and, and you get this red cast back up into your subject's face. Not good. Now, to alleviate that, there's a few options. Number one, what you can do is you can bring lights with you and you can flash the person and get rid of that cast. But in the case that you don't have that, you can go to Office Depot or Office Max and buy a whiteboard uh, for like $15 and lay that down in front of them. And then the light will hit the whiteboard and cast that back up in their face. And number three, you can use Photoshop and go into a curves adjustment layer, select the green channel and bring down the greens and then paint that back into their face with an inverted layer mask. So I hope that helps you.